One of the biggest things in this culture of ours is the music. Alongside being wordsmiths, a lot of us are also music producers. We make beats, drum patterns, the instrumentation that moves us. Originality is important in hip hop. Sampling is the foundation of the music as well. Taking one thing and flipping it to your own style. What do you do when you feel like another rapper is copying your style though? This is MC Light versus Antoinette. Now this is something new for myself as before the research for this video, I didn't know much of anything about this beef. And it's new for the channel as this is the first beef I'm covering from the 80s as well as the first beef between female MCs. That being said, let's get right into it. The beef between these two started in 1987 when the duo Audio2 comprised of brothers Melk D and Gizmo released the hit song Top Billin. For those that don't know, various lyrics from this song as well as the drum pattern would be sampled in many other songs. One of the biggest of those would be I Get Money by 50 Cent. I never knew that's where the sample was from. You learn something new every day though, right? Not long afterwards, Antoinette would release her debut single, I Got an Attitude, produced by Herbie Azor, and featured on the compilation album, Herbie's Machine, The House That Rap Built, which according to Audio 2, sounded too similar to their song Top Villain. They both feature a sample of the drums from the song Impeach the President by the Honey Drippers, which now by extension is a heavily sampled song itself, especially in rap. Audio 2 would enlist their friend and label mate, MC Light, to diss Antoinette for them as they were men and didn't want to be seen in a negative light for dissing a woman, so they wrote the song 10% diss with Light and produced it. According to an interview by Antoinette, the diss was misdirected as the one who produced the song and decided to use the sample was Herbie, a music producer known for being very instrumental to the early careers of duo Salt and Peppa and Kid and Play, doing things such as production and management. Herbie also apparently had a deal with Audio 2 to do a song together based on Audio 2's top billing song, but the song was never released, and instead, I Got an Attitude was released, and as I mentioned previously, it sounded similar to Top Villain. 10% Diss, from her first album, Light as a Rock, was a scathing diss track directly targeting Antoinette for using the beat, calling her a beat biter and a rock him sound alike, as well as a humorous shot at her having that attitude from her song title, because of her menstrual cycle. This song would go on to be sampled in dozens of other songs for its lines like the chorus, beat by the dope style taker, tell you to your face you ain't nothing but a faker, which was used in Notorious this song, Hit Em Up, or even the killing everybody in sight line that was featured in Raz Kaz's song, On Earth As It Is, which is one of my favorite songs by him by the way. This was a diss track that paved the way for numerous others throughout hip hop and is considered a top diss track by many, and at the time, there hadn't been much of a precedence for rap beefs given this one was in the late 80s. Light doesn't name Antoinette directly on this song but has multiple lines describing exactly who she's dissing, and according to an interview by Light for the book Check the Technique, she titled the song as 10% diss as that was only 10% of what she could have said. Once again, leave it to MCs to boast about how much lyrical slaughter they can deliver to their opponents. It's not a bad diss track at all, and as I said, it would be referenced in many hip hop songs since then. You know that one classic line? Hot damn ho, here we go again, used by Lil' Kim in the Quiet Storm remix? Yeah, that comes from this song as well. In response to this track, Antoinette released the song Unfinished Business, released sometime in 1988 after 10% Diss. According to an interview by Antoinette, her record label did not want her to respond to the song, so she didn't go as hard as she would like to apparently. She still took some shots here at light though, for example mentioning being called a biter and non-writer by a woman. That of course being MC Light from 10% This. This is a pretty underlooked track for some reason, perhaps because it wasn't included on her first album, like the diss track she is more well known for, but I think it still took some pretty decent shots at Light. There's some subliminals there that you wouldn't notice unless you really pay attention to the lyrics and know about the beef beforehand, but as subs typically go, the idea is to let the person know you're aiming at them, which was done here. Antoinette would again come at MC Light soon enough, which would knock some lights out and force a response. On her debut studio album, Who's the Boss, released in June 1989 and features the song Lights Out, Party's Over, she once again takes aim at Light. She did her thing here responding to 10% diss. From her first verse starting off flipping the now classic hot damn ho here we go again line, to making a reference to LL Cool J and Kumo D's beef which also took place around this time, to one of the more humorous lines in a song like, I got you floating like Fruit Loops, no wonder you hang with M-I-L-K, a brother that's a gremlin and a rockhead DJ. 
which of course are references to Audio 2's stage names, Melk and Giz. Giz being short for Gizmo from the movie Gremlins. She even flips 10% Dis by saying, this is 100% beef. I also like how she even flipped the chorus style of 10% Dis for this as well. It's filled with plenty of other lines, and even the title itself is a reference to MC Light's name, hence the Lights Out Party's Over. This is the kind of stuff good diss tracks are made of. This led MC Light to respond in kind with the song Shut the F Up Ho from her second album, Eyes on This, released in October 1989. For five verses, Light verbally violates Antoinette on everything from her rap skills, her weight, to calling her a hoe, to claiming she has people writing her rhymes, and refuses to even say her name as she claims that would bring Antoinette more fame, which she doesn't have. A lot of those are simply accusations that we can't exactly prove, except for the fame part, however. MC Light is definitely much more famous and applauded as an MC overall. I, like many others, only heard about Antoinette because of the beef with Light. She also makes reference to the track Unfinished Business and how whack it was, which is why she didn't respond to it. Once again, a good comeback from Light. For some reason, there's some assumption that this was the last song in the beef, but while looking, I found at least one more. Maybe it's because Light was such a bigger name than Antoinette that people just didn't know about it, but hey. On Antoinette's second and last release studio album, Burning at 20 Below, released in May 1990, she disses Light on the song, The Fox That Rocks the Box. This song right here stands out to me above all else because of the beat. It's my favorite from any of these tracks I've mentioned so far. Antoinette once again throws in a line about MC Light's name with, The light was dim, but here comes the blackout. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, simple, but I like wordplay like that sometimes. In both verses, she disses Light with responses to Shut the F Up, and I like it. This is one of my favorite diss tracks of the overall beef. As far as I know, this was also the last released diss track as well. Wrapping the beef up, people typically give it to MC Light in all regards, as she is considered one of the first and best female MCs, with her accolades like being the first female rapper to release a full solo studio album which is no small feat, I'm sure. However, there's more to beef than just being more famous and having a record label back on you, and so on and so forth. Antoinette has been called a female Rakim by some, which is pretty high praise itself, as he's considered one of the best rappers of all time, especially from around that time frame. There have also been rumors that one or both of the women in question had people writing their rhymes, and accusations thrown back and forth between the two in their diss tracks, but as far as I know, none of that was proven outside of the credits given on record already. Some say that the reason Antoinette's rap career didn't continue past these two albums is because of MC Light and the beef. Some would say it's business, politics, so on and so forth, etc, etc. Whatever the reason, she seemed like a pretty talented MC and it's unfortunate that what seems like the entirety of her rap career, she was embroiled in this beef that sparked from some kind of misunderstanding. But as usual, we received some good diss tracks from it, and even a song that would be sampled in numerous songs made since then. I would say that both went on to have careers still making music, but as I said, Antoinette has only put out two albums total, and MC Light has put out several albums since then, and she's also gone on to acting, voiceover work, and various other business ventures. Now as usual, what do you guys think about this beef? Do you have a favorite track from it? What other beefs would you like me to cover? Feel free to answer in the comment section below, and as always, thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, and stay tuned for more.